there, I'm Christina, Marketing Executive at Comsoft. And today we're going to start this episode of Field Service News with you. Picture this. When was the last time you purchased a product? Went down to the supermarket and you had a choice between the expensive, fancy branded version or, you know, the little bit more affordable supermarket's own version. You picked the cheaper one, you went home, you tried it, and your reaction was meh. It wasn't good, it wasn't bad, and you certainly got what you paid for. Now, think about this feeling. I got what I paid for. Is that the reaction that you want your customers to leave your business with? I don't think so. That's what three-star Google reviews are made of. And one thing that's certain is that no one really looks to three-star Google reviews for recommendations. This is why today we're going to talk about the connection between offering a remarkable customer experience and setting your prices, not for survival, but for profit. Today, we'll be counting down. Why is customer experience so connected with pricing? How to set prices for profit, not for survival? And navigating that tricky space where you have to set prices for individual customers as well as for business-to-business customers, because there's definitely a difference. Stay tuned to find out more. Question number one. Why is customer experience relevant in the context of price? Well, let's start with the fact that people nowadays are so overwhelmed with every single little product and service, asking them for good reviews, that it's a little bit hard to push yourself, you know, to write down a quick, quick opinion of your experience, whether it's good or bad. Now, we all know that bad experience can stand out a lot more than the average ones. And this is why you need to offer a remarkable customer experience in order to show people who are looking at your company that you are worth the investment. And this takes us to the other part, press. Now, good reviews are not going to bring customers flocking to you, but they will help those who are looking at your company to understand why your prices might be just a little bit higher than the competitions. Keep in mind that it's not just the quality of your work, but also how good your customer experience is and how good the buying journey you're offering. What people are looking for isn't the cheapest price necessarily, but convenience, ease of use, a company that's always there for them, always available to communicate, and always trustworthy. That's where a remarkable customer experience comes into place. You don't want people to recommend you because these guys are the cheapest on the market. No, you want people to recommend you because you're the best Number two, how do you set prices for profit and not for survival? Well, when you're not very sure of the audience you're targeting or the kind of business you want to run, it's very easy to fall into the trap of the unique selling point of providing the lowest price. Problem with that is that it's very easy to lose sight of how expensive it is to run a business. At the end of the day, the price of a service isn't just the cost of spare parts plus the technician's time. It's a lot more than that, from office supplies to fuel for your vehicles to what you pay your accountant, for example. If you want to make sure that you're not missing out on any of these costs, we've linked down below in the description box to a downloadable spreadsheet that lists the most commonly overlooked costs of a business and does the math for you. Number three, private customers versus business customers. And how do you set prices fairly for both? We've been spending a lot of time on the US Comisoft blog, writing about how important it is to spread out your sources of income between private and business customers. Why? Well, the thinking is a lot aching to the saying that you don't want all your eggs in one basket. For example, if the market takes a turn for the worse and private customers aren't really looking for field service companies 
to do renovations on their houses, for example, then your business takes a hit. But on the other hand, if your business is reliant upon a single contract and the holder of that contract goes under, you don't really want your business to follow too, do you? However, the problem with setting prices for business customers is the fact that they have a lot of decision power and they can and they will insist that you lower your prices. That's not a problem in and of itself. Obviously, you're at a decision table, you're debating which option is better for your business, and you should probably fiddle a little bit with the price, but always keep in mind just how low you can go. At the same time, a business customer values convenience most. So if you're the kind of field service business that can prove, for example, that you're using transparent digital tools in order to keep an eye on your schedule, your employees, your vehicles, etc., and you have cold hard numbers to prove how reliable you are, how short your emergency answering um, response is, then you definitely have an advantage over the competition and a business customer, or at least a smart one, will be able to tell that it's normal to pay a little bit extra for such a high quality service. And there you have it. If you keep thinking, oh man, I don't feel like I'm being paid properly for the services that I offer, then you're most likely right. If you want to see a couple of step-by-step -step detailed recommendations together with downloadable spreadsheets, guides, infographics, and checklists, then check out the description box below and follow the links. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our Comusoft channel, and go and watch our other web series, Success in the Field with Jack and Jason. I'm Christina, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye!